Welcome back to the channel. So today we are working on the YZ250 Enduro engine build again. So we got some awesome parts that we're going to put on this engine and it should come out absolutely amazing. So make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video to see how it comes out. All right, so what we got done in the last video on the engine is we Cerakoted the cases in this awesome satin aluminum color and then we put in all new bearings, a uh, new crankshaft here that turns over perfect, uh, new seals, and then we got a new wide ratio transmission kit from Rocky Mountain uh, that'll make this bike great on the trails. But the first thing I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go ahead and put in our shifting components. The transmission turns over smooth, but it's always good to make sure you can shift through all the gears. All right, well now that all the shifting mechanisms are in, I'm gonna go ahead and put on our shifter here and test it out. All right guys, well right now we are starting in neutral here and if we come over and look at the output shaft, uh, we basically, we know we're in neutral because this shaft, if I hold it and spin the other one, uh, this one wants to spin a little bit, but it doesn't have to spin in order to uh, spin the, clutch shaft right here or the input shaft so if we go up into second now we have to they both have to spin at the same time all right guys well in the last video i put in a few of our old hardware in just to seal the cases together and make sure that gasket's going to harden in place but what i'm going to be doing today is switching all these out for some brand new fasteners by bolt motorcycle hardware so they make uh two stroke engine kits and they also make uh, full body kits for your bike. So I'm gonna be using one on the body as well that I'll show you guys later on in the series. But take a look at these bolts here. It comes with everything labeled so I know where everything's gonna go. And then these bolts look so much better than the old Allens and they're gonna be eight millimeters so I don't have to switch back and forth. So I'm gonna go ahead, put in all these brand new bolts. And if you guys like the looks of this kit, I'll have it linked down in the description for you to check out their website. We're gonna go ahead and install our idler gear here. This idles off the kickstart and the clutch. A little washer go on here, and then a snap ring. You wanna make sure to put a new snap ring on here because these things do wear out, same as the transmission. Just be careful not to spread it out too much when you put them on. This is just our Kickstarter gear stopper right here. You can replace this backing plate here that folds up and locks them into place. I don't think it's gonna be necessary just on this Kickstarter here. I'm gonna make sure to put Loctite on these and get them in there pretty tight. Still our kickstart mechanism here. Just wanna rotate it around until it gets locked on that shaft. And then we can put our spring into the holder right here. It's in place good. 
All right, guys, well, now I'm going to go ahead and install the power valve governor bearings. These two uh, governor bearings are the only two that don't come in the wrench rabbit kit. So one goes here and then one goes on the outer right side case that I'll put in later. All right, so I probably should have put this bearing in before I installed the seal just because the seal, uh, it doesn't do well with heat. I mean, obviously it's in an engine, so it can take up to 150, 200 degrees, uh, but I'm only going to get this to about 150 and then pop the bearing in there. All right, well, now that I have the power valve bearing in there and it spins really good, uh, we can go ahead and pop on our crank gears. So we'll have that washer. And then uh, this gear is going to go with that side, this side back in towards the crankshaft. And this piece here is non directional. And then this washer will have this open side towards the bolt. And that'll just go in here. So I'm gonna put some uh, medium strength thread locker on there. And then I'll wait to go ahead and torque this down after I get the clutch assembly in. All right guys, well it's time to go ahead and put the clutch in, but I'm not actually gonna be running the stock clutch. Hinson sent over a complete clutch kit uh, which is going to include everything we're going to need here. So super excited about this. I'll kind of get into uh, what's special about these clutches here in a second. But let's open these up and see what they sent over. So we got our cover here. These things are sweet. Billet aluminum, super strong. And then this here is their billet proof clutch assembly. So it's going to include... Looks like your pressure plate here. Um, then you got a brand new, super strong inner hub, outer hub, and or clutch basket, and then your plates, friction plates. And then I believe there's a pack of springs in here. Yeah, it looks like there's a pack of springs in here as well. So super excited about this stuff. It's gonna work super well. So just looking at this pressure plate here and comparing it to the stock one, you can see how much ingenuity went into making this Henson one. Uh, so it's all coated. It's not just the bare aluminum and it is super strong and durable. Uh, and you can see you got these extra oiling holes here to keep your clutch a lot cooler, which will extend the life of it, uh, which is not included on the stock one. And then the other issue with the stock uh, clutch basket that a lot of people have is this kind of, you can see these deep grooves in it, which actually affect the plates moving up and down. Uh, and there's also, so this basket's way stronger and it's not gonna do that. Uh, even after a lot of use, these things are super strong. You can also see that you got extra oiling ports here on the sides of the basket that we wouldn't have on the stock basket. Super detailed, even putting these little lines in here to uh, keep the oil in the clutch. So mainly what they're gonna do is this clutch is super precisely machined, uh, which is gonna give you really a responsive clutch, but also really precise. And then it's gonna stay super cool and last a long time. So definitely a big upgrade. If you guys are interested in checking out Henson, I'll have a link down below in the description for you. All right, and this is the stock clutch basket here, but I do have to use the primary drive gear. So what I'm gonna do is grind down these rivets and I should be able to just pop this off of here and put it on the Henson basket. All these bolts are going to take red Loctite torqued down to 3.3 foot pounds.
All right, and then Henson recommends peening the inside of these bolts here to keep them in place, just with a punch and a hammer. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and torque down the clutch here. Uh, 40 foot-pounds using this Tusk clutch holding tool. And while I have the torque wrench out, I might as well just torque down this primary drive gear to uh, 40 or 54 foot-pounds. And we're just jamming the gear here with this Motion Pro gear jammer. I'll have this and the clutch holding tool down in the description for you guys. All right guys, well now that I got the primary gear and our clutch all torqued down, it's time to put these clutch plates in, but I'm actually not gonna do this tonight since I need to soak them in some oil overnight and it's getting pretty late. So I'm gonna go ahead and soak them and I'll catch you guys in the morning. All right guys, well it is the next day here and we got the clutch plates all soaked in the trusty Red Vines container. So we're gonna go ahead and put them in starting with the uh, friction plate here. Put in our seals for the water pump. It's important to make sure the uh, open end of the seal is facing towards the engine on the first seal. Just push it in there by hand. All right, and then for the water pump seal on the other side, the open end is going to be facing towards the uh, water, so it keeps the water out of the engine oil. washer here and then we'll go ahead and put our impeller on. I'm going to use some thread locker on the impeller. Now we're going to torque down the water pump to 10 foot pounds. We'll just hold it with a wrench on one side and then grab it with the torque wrench on the other. All right now we're going to install our power valve linkage here. Just pop some. All right guys, well this came out absolutely amazing on the right side of the case here with the Bolt motorcycle hardware and this Henson clutch cover and then the Cerakote looks awesome all together. 
I really like it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I still need to put the water pump cover on, but I'm probably going to hold off on doing that today just because I'm going to Cerakote it. But when I get the cylinder back from Millennium Technologies, I'm going to be Cerakoting that as well. So I'll hold off on doing this for now. All right, and the last thing I need to do on this side is put on this awesome blue Tusk oil cap here. Actually, I have to put on the Kickstarter seal, but before I do that, I'm going to put on this blue Tusk oil cap. And this is just a billet blue. It's going to stand out a ton on this side of the engine. I'm going to use some other bling parts from Tusk. So I'll have them linked down below in the description if you want to check out what other parts they sell. They sell a lot of awesome parts. But I'm going to go ahead and throw this on here. All right guys, well we are officially all finished up on the right side of the engine for today. So I'm gonna flip it around. We're gonna get to work on the other side. Uh, but this side of the engine came out awesome and I can't wait to see how it looks when we get the cylinder and the cylinder head on there. Super excited to show you guys all of that. All right, now we can go ahead and install the stator here. And when you're tightening down the bolts, you want to make sure to keep your timing mark on the stator lined up with the timing mark on the case here. I'm just going to advance the timing just a little bit, probably about right there. And the reason why I'm using a different bolt here is because I'm out of these ones and this has the same thread pitch and everything so it's going to be just fine. I might order up a new one of these uh, just to have but this will work just fine. All right guys, well, I'm gonna go ahead and install the stock Yamaha YZ250 flywheel on the here. All right guys, and we have another awesome off-road product here that's really gonna help with the bike. So this is a steely flywheel weight. And basically what this does is it's a little, a small weight that's gonna attach to the end of the flywheel here. It's just gonna screw on. And what this does is these motocross bikes have super lightweight flywheels, so they don't have very much rotating mass as the engine's going around. So this is going to add some extra rotating mass and give us some great traction off-road on hill climbs and stuff like that. And we'll also get smoother power delivery, which is nice when you're in uh, technical situations and you don't want the bike to stall. So this will help with stalling as well. Uh, so definitely recommend one of these if you guys take your motocross bikes off-road, it's great. Or even if you just are a beginning beginner motocross rider and you just want to smooth out the power delivery of your bike a little bit. So I'll have a link down below where you can check out this product. These guys do a ton of other stuff as well. They're going to be doing the suspension for the bike. So I'll keep you guys updated on that when we get there. But I'm going to go ahead, just spin this on here for now. This kit comes with a special tool here that allow me to torque this down to 40 foot pounds, but I have to wait until I have the piston on so I can lock up the engine to do this. All right, so the next step is gonna be to put on this gasket and the ignition cover, but I'm gonna hold off on putting the gasket on there just cause I don't wanna crush it before I actually get this flywheel weight secured all the way. Uh, but Tusk also sent over a billet ignition cover here and this thing is super sexy. It's gonna look awesome on the engine. Definitely a dark black billet aluminum way better than the original cover. Let me grab the original cover here and we can compare them. So here's the stock Yamaha cover. As you can see, it's like plastic all beat up. So this Tusk one is gonna be a huge improvement. So I'll have this link down below with all the other parts for you guys to check out.
All right, guys, well, that is gonna be it for today's video. The engine turned out absolutely amazing. I can't wait to show you guys what I have in store for the top end on this engine. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you guys wanna see how this bike turns out. And if you guys wanna see behind the scenes content, make sure you're following me on Instagram as well. I'll see you guys in the next video.